we're talking about, round, oval, whatever it is. I'm going to show you how to sharpen the top so that the edges cut cleaner and faster so you don't abuse your uh, disc cutters. Yeah. So basically, I have these disc cutters right here. These are the round ones. And then look, 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 show this one. This is what they look like. If you guys are not sure what those are, it's the disc cutters. I actually have a Swanstrom set. They're lovely. And I was cutting some out earlier. So um, everyone knows, I'm sure everyone knows what this is, but this is the concept. These are the little stamps. And you would put like a plate, let's say, right in here that are you no to this and then you lock it down and then whack it and then you get this lovely little disc here that you can form in hollow form and solder and do whatever lovely things you want to do with it so you guys so today is that and I'm gonna follow up with cleaning another one of Kevin Potter's dies this is Suni's die so if you guys on Friday saw me do this one it was just as rusted as this one is and I'm gonna do it again because some of you guys it was the day we did the hammer remember the hammer so when we cleaned up and we did the texture oh wait, I don't know lost my hammer but remember the hammer that we texturized that day I also cleaned it so a lot of people I don't know, missed that, didn't see it, and now it's like all over. People saying, how do you do it? How do you do it? So after the, um, oh, thank you for the hammer. So that was the hammer. So after the, um, after showing how to sharpen the disc cutter, so we did this, we put this design on here in two different ways. We did that, and we got that finished. So this was Friday's show, last Friday's. So I'm going to show that again. So you guys, it'll be kind of like a fun little day. And then whatever you guys have questions on, please let me know. And I am here to help you. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Sorry for being a little late today, you guys. I, I was singing this song, Taking Care of Business. Working every day. So honestly, you guys, I was... I actually do run a business. <laughs> I'm not a teacher by any means. Um, so I was really taking care of business. That's why I had to push back my time. So I appreciate you guys kind of shifting. I know Heidi, Heidi, oh my God, Heidi, you're the cutest thing. Heidi actually sent me uh, a reminder. She put an alarm on her, um, on her phone and it says on each show I swear I'll show it to you it's hilarious and then I want to give a shout out you guys to Marge Colum. Um yeah you guys see this do you know what this is hi Marge Marge I'm gonna show you off girlfriend Marge you are awesome so this is a before picture of Marge's headlights and this is the after picture of Marge's headlights now you guys um, yeah, before, after. So she used the jewel tool to polish that out, all the fog. So she was able to get a majority of all the fog off, as you can see, beautiful, clear, crystal clear. She said some of the deeper pits were still there, and she says that didn't hinder, that's not what she wanted. She wanted to actually make sure the fog was gone, and that's honestly what you need for your headlights. Ah, thank you so much, Kat. Ah, thank you, guys. I appreciate that. Kat says, I don't need to apologize. I'm worth the wait. So did Mark. Thank you so much for the love. I appreciate that, you guys. I, I honestly am doing my best. The other day, I answered the phone. What was it? It was, it was uh, Su Su Susan Cook. And she's like, Ani! And I'm like, yes. <laughs> I go, and she was asking about her order, and she's like, I can't believe you. Oh, Kathy Cook, Kathy Cook, Kathy Cook. Thank you. Thank you for that. So Kathy Cook, hi, Kathy, if you're watching. She called, and I said, yeah. I go, everyone's packaging, and I saw the phone ring, so I grabbed it. She's like, I can't believe it. You were just on air teaching, and now you're answering the phone. I go, there you go. This is live as it comes, you guys. This is not pre-rehearsed. This is nothing. Literally, I just got off of a phone conference. That was very important, and I jumped into this. So, 
I'm here for you guys. That's all I want you guys to know. And I'll do everything for you. Okay. So, okay. Someone wants to know the cost of it from Greece. I just got that message. So, we're getting phone calls. It's a busy day here at Tool Tool, you guys. <laughs> so, I am not going to waste any more time chit-chatting. So, let's get started. I just wanted to give a huge shout out to um, Marge. Oh wait, let me do it this way. It's actually better. You see that? Okay, it's fine. Okay, you're out to take over. Okay, so you guys, um, uh, I'm going to start the disc cutter uh, sharpening. Yara, let's go ahead. So, Yara, you're going to have to be my wingman. Chris is on the phone. Okay, good. So, let I, ju I just want to say hi to everybody. I don't know who's out there in Facebook, in YouTube land, but I just want you to know I'm just so excited to be here. Oh, Susan Jones. Hi, Susan. I talked to you on the phone, too. And Lisa Joy Kabir. Oh, hi, Fred. Welcome. We haven't seen you in a few days. Hi, Claire from the UK. Suni, Suni, I'm working on your dye. You're going to get a lot of stuff coming your way, honey. Hi, Bonnie. And we've got Cal uh, Karen Miller Anderson. How you doing? We got Linda. Hi, Linda and Margaret. Teresa and Debbie. Hi, Debbie. Can't wait for you to come to Cali. And hi, Heidi. Heidi, thanks for joining. Heidi, I'm still working on uh, what you suggested for a demo. Don't think I didn't forget. It's just your email keeps getting lower and lower. And we got Nancy and Janice. Welcome, Carol. Yes, it's Carol Barnett. Barnett. And Farah, how welcome, welcome, you guys. And Wendy, oh, my people are here. You guys are my people. I swear, you guys. You know, um, Helen. Oh, hi, Helen. I was just talking to Helen earlier today on Facebook. And who's here? Art, hi. There you go. I, hi, you guys. I just want you guys to know that you guys are like a part of this show. So hearing that you guys are here brings joy to my heart and I want you guys to know that I love you all and I'm going to get started. Okay. So that's why I take the time to acknowledge you guys because I really appreciate you guys. taking. I'm taking my time for you and you're taking the time for me and I'm just uh, filled with gratitude. So let's go ahead and get started. First of all, I want to explain to you if you don't know what a disc cutter is, I'm sure you do. Um, but again, you just you can create um, little discs, whether it's oval shaped, whether it's um, different shapes. There's many different you know uh, shapes and stuff that they sell. This one happens to be a Swanstrom um, one. I know the owner of Swanstrom, and um, what who's the, who's the one that demonstrates at Rio all the time? Tim Sheriff, I love him so much, and he's a great dad. So they make good quality tools, by the way. Um, so the disc has a little angle to it, you guys. The cutter, the disc cutter. So you guys see how it has a little raised angle to it, and that kind of creates the entry point and then cuts the disc. So I'm going to show you guys how to sharpen the face. So we're not going to sharpen the sides. You never want to change the diameter of the die, the cutter. So we're just going to lightly hone the top. So this one actually hasn't been used that much. So that's the one I'm not going to bother with. But there's, there's some that um, I'm going to sharpen. Well, let's do, I kind of want to do like a before, like for example, like this one was before. So this one, you guys, okay, so right here. Okay, well, hold on, Yara, just come over here. So um, you know what? Let me do this overhead camera. Let's do that. Yara, Yara can't handle me. Okay. So are we on? Okay, so like, for example, this one earlier I, um, I cut. And you can see it's kind of got has a little bit sharp lip. It's not as sharp as we would want it. So I actually cut these right before I went on air to show you a before. So this was the before. You see how that cuts that same size. So let me show you guys 
what wheels you should use while sharpening. So if you have the Trizac kit, this is going to be a great kit to work on, like the Coarse 400 or the Medium 500, the 20 micron. Or if it's really kind of choppy a little bit on the edges or you don't feel it super sharp, I recommend touching it with like a 220 grit ceramic, whether it's the 3 inch or whether it's the 4 inch size. So you guys, I am going to show you guys how to do it. So I already started kind of put a little black little ring around it. But I want to do that a little bit more so you guys can see exactly. So our objective, you guys, is not to create a flat grind. Like, I don't need to do the center right here. I'm not going to do the center at all. Like, look, I'll put a little X here. And you guys can see where I'm touching. So well, what happens is, do you see these? Oh, I was going to put an X, but I changed it. No X. I'll put an X. Don't do that here. So... If you guys look closely, there's like grind marks. And they usually just take like a wheel and they just grind it because it's production, you know? It's not a flat grind. So, so it does create a little bit of a concave surface. Do you guys see that? So it's not completely flat across. But when you use your jewel tool disc, the disc is completely flat. So you're going to actually, so we're basically going to start like from an edge like this and just gently pop it up to be even. We don't have to worry about if the inside, I if this area is being ground. Our main concern is just the outer rim. Are you guys with me? Okay, so we're just going to worry about the outer rim. So I'm going to use the 220 grit because this one left a really rough finish behind and I just want to show you guys how you do this so this is where you just barely need to touch and so the first point of contact you guys is extremely important so when I'm saying point of contact contact so I mean like the second that you start you make a little touch it has to be extremely light because you don't want to start grinding at an angle do you guys see that you just want to lightly touch, find where you are, and then just lightly shave right over. Just to see how lightly I'm touching. I'm not pushing, just a light little glide. And what's great is you can see it through the disc. So that makes it really nice. I don't know. Should I do? Maybe I'll do the four inch so you guys can see a little bit better of what I'm doing. So again, I'm just going to show you guys real quick what I'm doing. So it's a very quick point of contact. So like right here, I'm going to start right here. So pay attention to right here. I'm going to put a little arrow. So put a, pay attention to right here. Do you guys see this area? So I am going to touch it lightly there. Lightly, you guys, lightly. Do you guys see that? Do you see so how I barely touched it? Lightly. So there, already the lightest touch is going to start just right now. I'm going over the whole surface and you can see it's not completely even. I'm working to get that back. And so there, that's all you need to do to sharpen this. Do you guys see how it's, it had a little, they had a little loop to it and I just lightly did. Oh, it is so nice and sharp right now. And then if you feel like one area isn't as sharp as another, so all you do again, you guys, Find a little point of contact. Just make sure you darken it everywhere just so you know where you are. Okay? And just, again, just start light, lightly touch it right here. You see I'm going to be on the left side. And then just pop it up across. And you'll see it will happen immediately. And there you go. Oh, yeah. I totally feel how sharp it is. It's very nice. And you can check it out by your nail. Do you see? That is my, s that is my nail coming off. That's my DNA right there, you guys. So right there is, a, it, so what it should do is, it shouldn't slide. It should kind of stick to your nail. It should bite. Yeah, and then you can, but you can also test it. I mean, it's, it's, it's not carbide, for God's sakes, but it's nice and sharp. Look, all of these edges are my nail. So you guys, let's just show, I'm going to sharpen another one, but I want to show you how 
um, nice as he's going to cut. So let's go ahead and slice something. <laughs> let's, let's just, I'm going to hammer, I'm going to whack it. Let's whack something. Okay. Okay, so you guys, I'm going to use the die cutter and put this piece of brass. This is about, I think, like a 20 gauge. And I'll just go ahead and, which one does this go into? Nope, this one. This one? Okay, perfect. So I'm just going to get it in there, and it's really nice. You just tighten it like so. Give it a nice little tight. Now, you can put, <laughs> you can put this. This is just a little bit. Oh, this is the, this is just a burr life. You can put this, honestly, not everyone does this, but um, I know a lot of people are going to say, why didn't you use that? So I'm using it. Okay, you guys. So now I fit it in there, and I'm going to take a hammer. Just make sure it's a good heavy hit, a heavy headed hammer, you know, like a little chasing hammer. So you're just going to give it a few whacks. Okay, you guys ready? And go. One, two, there you go. You guys, I just want to be clear on something. You should always wear glasses, and I had them. Oops. When I was practicing, you guys, or to show you the edges of how rough it is, I wore glasses, but you should always wear glasses. I got all excited. I got caught up in the moment. So, you guys, let's see what we created. Let's go ahead and take this bad boy off and take this. Yeah, so let's take. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's nice. So you can see the edges are nice and shiny. As you let me clean it so that the burr is off. It's a nice clean cut. It's really smooth. Yeah, it's like a polished cut, you guys. And there's no real like lip that was there before. So if we compare the one before, look. I am gonna finish it on the jewel tool, but I wanna show you guys what it looked like before. Uh-huh. Yeah. So Okay, so that let me flip it around. So you can really see how, let me hold it. Yeah, so look at the difference in the cut quality. You guys, you can see where it lifted up right there. There's like a lifted, do you guys see that? There's like a ray, I can feel it with my, like you hear it? How it catches my nail. So right here, this is before I cut it, right before I started. Yeah, so the metal had bent, so it wasn't a clean cut. Versus this, look at this. You guys see how clean that cutting action is? Very, yes, yeah, so this is much, this is like a clean shearing action versus, do you see, you can really see how it bent over right here. Do you guys see how it bent over? I don't know if the camera is doing justice, but I can see it. So look right there, how it's kind of got a rounded, little bit of a bent lip right there. Do you guys see that? Hi, Myra. Thanks for joining us. And do you see how this is more of a disc versus that? You'll actually notice the difference when we polish. So this is actually the other side. You guys see this? So this is the same side right here. So from there, you don't see much of a difference. But it's... Yeah, you. I know. I have actually a heavier hammer. But I kind of wanted you guys to... Yes. Yes, but you got to do my technique. So I'm going to clean this up. And Okay, so this is the one. This is before. I'll write before. Before. Okay, and this is jewel tool. Yes, Heidi, bless your heart. It, she always has a good thing to say. It doesn't look like it was chewed off. This looks like there was some chewing action. It's true. Look at it. You can even see it over here. I didn't even look. I'll uh, show you guys over here. It, you can just hear it. Forget about seeing. You can hear it. You can feel it. You can really feel it more than anything. And here, it's just a cleaner cut. You know, you guys, remember, any time that you're dealing with high, you know, things that are manufactured in high production, they're not going to use the best quality, high technology products to finish this. They're going to use something to get the job done and that will last a long time. And usually just a stone grinding wheel, you guys, is sufficient 
for these guys, but it's not the cleanest cut. Even when you get a brand new disc cutter, by the way, FYI. So you guys, let's go ahead and clean this up and then I'll continue to sharpen more. Okay, so just while we're on this, I'm going to put my little fingertips on. Yesterday, it was so funny. <laughs> Yay. Oh, no. Thank you, Myra. Myra, thank you so much. Myra asked if I had my JT lights on. These are the touch screen lights. And you can tell. I mean, touch, touch. Would I say touch screen? You know what? Because my brain is thinking of the disc cutter. Gosh darn it. Um, these are our Jewel Tool Easy Touch lights. You can see, and it really does make a difference. If I turn both of them off, you can see how it gets dim. Sure, you can side the side view. Yeah, so these are our touch on, touch off lights, and they're really nice. You can bend them over everything you're working on, give yourself some extra light. They're very nice. And then, but we also have the always on lights too that you, once you plug it in, the light stays on. So we have two options, by the way. Thank you, Myra. Thanks, hi, Myra. Okay, so you guys, let's go back to this. So we're gonna do the before, and we're gonna do the jewel tool, okay? So let's go ahead and get started. I don't know how to show you guys the surface. The jewel tool will make both of them look good, you guys. It's true, Yarrow. That is true. That's true. True story. But I'm gonna just use my um, magic eraser to smooth the edges. So let's go ahead and see how fast. Like, like I'm gonna do the same smoothing of edges and see what finish I'll get. So I'm just gonna go like this real quick, just real quick. But do you guys see how? The lip is much more raised on the before. Do you guys see that? Now that really shows. Janice, th okay, so now watch you guys. This is important. Janice says she loves the touch lights. I know, they're pretty cool, huh, Janice? Okay, so do you guys see how the lip was bent over on the one that we did not sharpen? And the one we sharpened right now, watch what I'm going to do. I'm just going to lightly touch it. And you guys can see already it wants to do the whole surface. You guys see that? There. So I am being able to get more of the actual face. You see how it's wanting to grind inside where I wrote dual tool. That tells me it's much more flush. Whereas this one, it didn't even allow me to get near it. It was so raised the outer edges. That's interesting, huh? Okay. So then the edges are pretty rough here. But oh my god, the edges, oh my god, I wish I had feel a vision, you guys. You can actually even see it too. Do you guys see a difference? I haven't polished this side, but it's so much cleaner than this side. Oh wow. So you, my friend, need some help. So let's go ahead and just, actually I'm not even going to use the magic eraser on the outside. Really, I'm not. Just the around the edges right here. Just to smooth that out. But I'm trying not to get to the face of the jewel tool because that's what's happening. Okay, so there. So now once you have a disc, you guys, and it's nice and smooth like this, it's nice and sharp, clean the sharp edges. I actually like to get rid of a little bit of sharpness. Oh, it's so clean. Oh, nice. Nice, nice, nice. So I'm going to show you guys real quick how to polish this. So this was with the fine. You could use a very fine too, scratch eraser. And I'm going to use my felt wheel to polish. But then stay tuned, you guys. I'm still going to do another disc cutter, okay? So don't worry. We're not done with the disc cutting. I just want to take you through the whole process. So you guys. Yes, and I'm totally slowing this down, really, you guys, because it really can be done really fast. Yeah, like literally two seconds. I'm totally going in slow-mo. Okay, I am looking for this. So that's my felt wheel. I'm going to turn that on full speed, give myself some compound. And so like within seconds, you can see I already get a nice little polish coming up right here. You guys see that? You see, you shouldn't have compound at this stage. You guys see that? 
it should just be a clean polish. And then if you want to do the other side too, this is how you polish a disc. So if you notice, I'm not using the scratch eraser. I'm just using the felt wheel. And I, again, you guys, I'm going to do this section by section. So like I'm going to first approach this section, okay, and polish this section. Then I'm going to move on and polish this. So it's like kind of coloring by numbers. This is probably three. Maybe I'll blend it all in with four. And I'll just keep going to five and then six. Do you guys see that? This is kind of cool. You guys should take a picture of that. Okay, so this would be one, actually. This would be one. And this is two. Okay, so there. So these are the steps I'm going to do. I'm going to do one, two, three, four, and then five, six. So watch how I do this, you guys. Ready? Put the vacuum on. Give myself a good amount of compound. And you're going to hold it good and use your index finger to support and push it up. You c so I'm going to hold it right here. So don't do anything. No special pushing action. And it's going to want to almost pull it. So just kind of say, no, it's mine. And you should get this immediately. You guys see that? So now we're going to give yourself a little bit more compound. Let's go to number two. Just kind of blend that those areas together. And so now we have one and two. Do you guys see that? Super clean, super polished. Okay, so now we're going to move to three and bring it in together with four. So do you see how I'm just holding it there? And if you have an extra pit, just hold it there. So now I'm going to bring it in to number four. Give yourself a little bit more compound in between steps. What? Because I'm showing how to polish properly. So do you guys see how I polish that, you guys, nice and evenly? Now let me keep, now we're going to go to five and six and bring it all together. Kristen, I can't hear you. Like the volume is really low. So there, there's five. So if you have a stubborn area, just put more compound. No, it's in there. So again, that was five. And so that was five. Right. Yeah, I can hear you now. So who said they didn't think about polishing the disc? Debbie, oh my God, Debbie, you have to polish these. She says she never thought of polishing. I'm telling you, they go from zero to like hero. Even if you buy these ready, you can give it a quick polish. Oh yeah, you guys, so cute. Who said that? Susan, so this is the railroad from yesterday, by the way. It, the railroad stake that we turned into a forging area. Isn't that cool? We did this yesterday, you guys. So if you missed this video, it was just yesterday's video. So look for it. So cool. It came out so pretty. Mm. We put that, and I threw it with abrasives. Okay, so let's continue, you guys. Number six. We're back at number six. So again, I'm going to get in ready position. And if you see any kind of compound, just whack it off. And I'm going to, again, pinch it and use my finger. It's so cute. Lisa Jacober said, she's so cute. You're making me rethink all my jewelry that I polished, and I'm going to have to do it again. So you guys see that there's still a little section right there. So now, once I did whatever I could reach, I'm just going to glide in there and kind of hold it there and kind of give myself a nice little polish everywhere. See that? So now you have this. So if your rub marks are there, don't worry. The rub marks can be taken out with a buff or the magic buff. So if they're just light little bu uh, rub marks, you guys don't worry about them. If you want to leave them there. Okay, I'm so happy you guys are loving this. So do you guys see how we're completely polished, super even? I'm trying to get a non-glare of... 
Uh, Susan, Susan said her favorite video thus far was yesterday's. Yeah, I'm not going to lie, you guys. That steak was pretty impressive. Like, you can see my face. That's me. Hi. Hello, everybody. It's like a microphone that talks back at you. Like, seriously, it came out so good. Everyone's been talking about this, and it was so fast. Even Lori, who gave it to me, says, my God, that was so fast. And I said, and I did it while teaching. I explained how to do it. So, you guys, when you have the this cutter like this, so what you're going to do is you're going to want to knock off, what's it called, any kind of compound. If you want to take it to the felt polishing wheel, so you just go like this, get rid of all that. And to be honest with you, a lot of the times, some of the compound off my fingers, you see that, come off on this. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a buff. So Oh, yeah, don't. So, yeah, when it's a solid disc like this, when you buy like these plates, you don't have to redo, you know, it already comes flat. You just have to polish it. What you can't, but what's interesting is, you guys, you can't get a polish with, um, what do you call it? You can't get a polish just with the buff. You're going to get waves. The lines are still going to be there. So I we're only able to do that because of the felt wheel. And I want you guys to look at my felt wheel. It's flat. It's pressed felt. Um, but this felt, you want it to get a little shiny when using it. I just want you guys to be clear. Because yesterday, everyone was telling someone on a jewel tool community to clean your felt, which is correct. When it gets too gunked up, you should clean it. And you guys were awesome at telling her but the problem was is she just got a jewel tool so her felt was perfectly prepped she hadn't used it but you kind of almost want to um oh yeah like yeah have these fibers compressed and it works so much better it's like i've conditioned the wheel you want it to look like this you guys see where it has a little sheen to it the sheen is okay it's just when it gets too glossy you might want to clean it up you know, because they are they, they do tend to get glossy. Do I have a glossy one? I don't have a glossy one. I usually clean them. Okay, so you guys, I'm going to take the buff, and you can put compound on it. You can do whatever you want. Put yourself some compound. That's fine. So there, you guys see that? You get that polish, and then the lines go. Yeah, so a lot of the stuff I use today is found in the metal polishing kit. Oh my god, I I love her. Who who has a Swanstrom disc cutter? Oh, Barbara. Yes, Barbara, Barbara Menard. Barbara says she has her Swanstrom disc cutter already ready to go. You know, you see how you guys can get that? You can even get a better, I don't know where this uh, buff came from. I don't know if this is mine. I don't know. These are weird. These are not my buffs, but, but oh, yeah, I can show the magic buffs. Oh, yeah, perfect. That's it. Actually, this is perfect for the mag magic buff. So let me go ahead. Yeah. So uh, if you have the, you know, I, a lot of you guys have gotten this. So just make sure there's no compound on it because you don't want to, get any compound on this wheel because it's already pre-treated uh, with compound and you don't want to add any kind of gook to it. So I just want to make sure. And then so you just hold it like this and you get that real, look, look at how it like totally pops and shines. Like it's really nice. It gets really some of that fog off. Are you guys with me? Isn't that pretty? And if you have a little bit of extra stuff that's from the compound, just wipe it off. Just do this and do it one more time. And you take it off. There you go. You guys see that? Man, I got my fingerprint. Sorry, you guys. But it is what it is. So that's the disc cutter. That's the jewel tool disc cutter we did. Okay? So I hope that helped. Now I'll show it again. Yeah, hold on. Let me get rid of this. Okay, so you guys, this was the one that we cut. Uh, 
Oh, how do I clean the felt disc? Oh, so he, who asked? So this is what we get. Oh, Robin. Hi, Robin. Okay, so Robin just asked, how do you guys clean the felt disc? How do you clean it? All you do is you just run it, Robin, okay? And just grab yourself a piece of wood and some sandpaper and just lightly just touch it up like this. Just a light little zippity doo da and look. And there, you see how it cleans it up? And you can apply more compound too. Don't forget, after you clean your felt wheel, you guys, give yourself a liberal, a generous amount of compound. Kind of re, because what you want to do is, you want to get those felt fibers um, kind of uh, pressed again. You don't want it fluffy. This is by no means this. Do you know what I mean? So you don't want your felt fluffy. You want your felt looking like this. I kept this on purpose. So the buff should always be good and fluffy, yes. But the felt should have a nice little sheen. So after a while, you work on something like this. Yeah, so the magic buff is really cool, you guys. It's already impregnated. It's lovely. So. Oh, so. Su Susan, to do the felt, you don't really need a heavy grit. So I would always, so what's this one? I think this is a 220, this is a 120. A 120 or a 220, you're in the safe zone, you're good. 120, 220, it's fine. You just want to kind of clean up and kind of release some of those fibers that got really shy. But it's going to take you guys a while before you have to clean your felt. So don't get crazy and start cleaning your felt. You're so welcome, Robin. Thanks for joining us. I haven't seen you in a while, but I've been listening to you. And she is a top fan. You've been a top fan from way back. So this is what I did. Oh. There you go. And that was the before. Yeah. So really quick. And then, you know, or you guys... Uh, you know what's nice too is like if you're gonna like create this like a dome, if you're gonna put it in a thing and whack it, you know, it still wouldn't be a bad idea to give it a quick little polish, put some leather where you're gonna whack it and do it, and then you at the second time around when it's domed, you can just lightly zip over it with a light polish. So it the it so I just want to encourage you guys to polish through steps of, you know, before soldering, steps before forming, you know, stuff of that nature. So always, you know, don't forget to, don't just wait till the very, very end to do the final polishing. You, you got to be mindful and polish throughout your process. So, or finish at least. So uh, this is what I used so far. So, so far I used the 220 grit of the purple ceramic. I actually used the 4 inch, but you can use the 3 inch. Oh, so that's on the screen. So we actually have a fully assembled, uh, that's the three inch kit like here with the bump on and the purple mounted already on a back pad and Yara put that up on the screen. If you don't have that, that's a great little collection. Yes, yes. And then, so then I used the scratch eraser. Um, the f No, I didn't use the scra four inch scratch eraser. Okay, so th then I used the scratch eraser, you guys. Honestly, with a clean cut, I just couldn't, I was looking for my very fine, but I couldn't find it and I used the fine. But honestly, you guys, you can get away with a very fine, which is nice because if you put extra scratches and you don't want to clean them up with the felt, the very fine is a great way to go. That's what I was looking for. And then I used the, po the felt wheel with my polishing compound. Ta-da! We did touch it up with the buff and the, the magic buff. Do not, so I use both. I use the, the regular buff. Where is this? I use the regular buff. And then I use the magic buff. So they can actually work in, in hand in hand, you guys. They're really nice. So this comes in three inch and four inch. My three inches around here. Oh, there it is. I see it now. It's actually right here. I actually stole it off the table. So there, this is a newer version. I did. I took it off this table. I stole. Okay, well, you know what? I say it has a D. 
Whoever can do this can make up words. Okay. <laughs> or this. Okay? So this was yesterday, you guys. Yesterday I took a picture. I'm going to post it, you guys. I took a picture of myself looking at it. And I had my phone in my hand. And I could t totally take a picture of me looking at this. You'll get... What are you doing, y'all? You can take... I was, like, standing here with my phone. And I took a picture of it. Because I'm like, God, it's like a... It's like a mirror. Like, no joke. Can you guys see things? So that was cool. So this is cool. This was yesterday. So if you missed it, you guys might want to watch it. We just took a regular railroad. Oh, oh, by the way, everyone wanted to know the backstory of this? The backstory is it's from 1940, and it was a railroad uh, uh, stake uh, from the railroad uh, tracks back in Pennsylvania. So it traveled long ways to get to California. And now it's living the good life. It's polished, living in the sun. I'm going to take it to the beach. No, <laughs> Not yet. We can't go to the beach yet. We can swim and surf and observe and run, but no laying out. So I know, right, Kristen? So let's go back. I'm going to do one more round of sharpening. So you guys really, like, I really want it to stick. You know what I mean? Like, my dad used to always say, watch. So you learn a lot by watching. The eyes are like thieves. It could steal anything. So if you guys want to learn how I'm doing it, put on your little glasses and watch closely. Okay, so you guys, I'll do a smaller one. Because if you're like, that was a big one, how to do a smaller one? Okay, we'll do a smaller one, no problem. So again, and then if you guys don't have the four inch, it's, it's no problem. You can totally use the two, uh, the three inch. I just want you to know there. I just wanted to show everyone. Everyone wanted to ask, been asking me about the foreign. So there's the foreign. So again, I'm going to stick to the 220 grit. Yeah. Yeah. So again, I'm going to show you guys real quick. So I'm going to find a contact point. So like, okay, so you guys see how it's, it's high right here, the, the height. So you might want to use this as a contact point, the lower right there. Do you guys see that? I'm going to put a little arrow. So we're going to make one little touch there. And then we're going to work our way, and it's going to quickly pop around. You're going to see how quickly it'll pop to get all of this. But you don't want to heavily grind. We just want a little, zip, like a little fine layer just to liven up the edge. We're not grinding, you guys. You're not making a new disc cutter. We are just honing. So if you guys have heard that term honing, Honing is just livening up the edge. If it kind of dulled out, you just zip, a little zip, and it gets woken up like a little slap in the face. Wake up. Wake up, dude. No, kidding. So you guys, I'm going to make a little contact point right here. So I'm going to go up against the wheel and lightly go like this. But when I go up against the wheel, when I, when I go up against the wheel, you guys, okay, it's not a, and then I go like this. No. Oh, I mean, it's not a err, uh, and then I go like this. No, it's a light, like I'm barely, like fe like a zip, little touch. Like you like, like give a little kiss, and then you're just going to glide over like this. I'm barely touching it, and let it go. No, you don't want sparks to be flying. If sparks are flying at this stage, please stop, and don't do it. <laughs> no kidding. So again, I'm going to run this at medium high, and there you go. So again, you guys see the arrow through the disc? I'm going to actually zoom in really, really good. Just a little zhuzh. Little zhuzh. So I'm going to be ma making a contact point. Do you guys see? Right about, right. oh, there it is. It wants to go there. Okay, just there. Now I'm going to go over the whole thing. And that's pretty much all I need to do, you guys. And that's all. And if you feel like maybe you rounded that over again, all you do is just watch this. Oh, wait, shoot. I'm going to give you boo-boo um, fixes here. So, again, you can just start off right here real quick. Remember, the jewel tool can fix anything. So you just lightly touch it. Look, I'm not even touching the whole thing. Just there you go, and that's it. You see, if you think you kind of rolled it over, don't worry, you guys. You can fix it. it. No problem. Oh, yes. You like my little word? That's another word. I fixed it. it. Don't worry, we fixed it. It's all good. So beautiful. Okay, you guys see this? So now, okay, here, so there. So that's what it should look like. So again, you guys, 
go like this to see if it's sharp it's sharp look at that it's totally sticking in my nail it doesn't bite and that's what you want you want it has to bite look at late my left out mark in my nail for crying out loud look at that but you can totally do this you guys see how sharp that edge is those are those are shavings of my nail right there <coughs> i used to do this a lot at woodworking shows ow that's sharp Woo. <coughs> i don't know i see these weird words and then air <coughs> thank you water Okay, so you guys, let's, okay, y'all, let's cut to the, um, I've been talking a lot today, even before I went on air, I'm talking a lot. Kristen says I always talk a lot. Well, you know what? Cheers to everyone who talks a lot. May you live long and a prosperous life. Okay, so you guys. This is the one we sharpened. I'm going to put you right here. You get your own little pedestal. You guys move over. <coughs> Let's go ahead and find another spot to cut. So this is a little smaller. This one, right? Yeah. No. Oh, who said that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lisa. I, Lisa says <laughs> she, I'm giving her chills doing that to my nail. <coughs> Lisa. I know you do nails. S Hello, Lisa. I need help. <laughs> yeah, as you can see, I don't really go and get my nail. Okay, so you guys, <coughs> so this is the one we sharpened. You guys see that? So you guys can put little lube life on it, but honestly, really don't need it. It's so sharp. But I'm gonna put it just so everyone doesn't get mad at me. I actually just took it off. Great, Ani. Good job, Ani. Okay, just put that in there, and I'm gonna give it a whack. I have a huge hammer. I don't know what happened to it. Wasn't it just here? Whatever. Anyways, it is. It's here. S whatever. No one cares. Just, just hammer the mother. Let's just hammer. Okay, so you go right here. One, one two, three. That's good. <coughs> three, and <a> <laughs> three and a half. So let's go ahead and pull this little sucker out and see what we got. Ta-da! Okay, hold on. Let me clean this up. <coughs> oh, this is nice. Very, very nice. Yes, thank you, Margaret. I live long and prosper. Wait, wait, wait. What did Lisa say? Oh, my God. <coughs> oh, Lisa. Lisa says to come out to Montana, and she'll take care of me. Okay, here, then let me just go over here. Screw that. Here, I'm over. I moved over. Sorry, go just give me an overhead cam. Look at this. Look at this. Look at this. Shine on the edge. Super clean. Super. Oh, like you guys, you know what's interesting is usually you could feel like it rolling over. Here you just feel like a clean cut. I don't know how to explain. Like it's just like clean. It's like a sheer. Oh. Very nice. And again, something like this, you guys, <coughs> whatever you're going to do, if it bent over, it didn't really bend over, honestly, you guys. Uh, it's just very clean and sharp. So if anything, I don't really think I even need to do the edge, but I'm going to get rid of that sharp edge. Just that little, it's like, like you guys don't understand, even this is nice and sharp. Like it's not even folded over. You guys, look at what it's doing to my nail. Like look, that's my nail, and that's how clean and sharp the edge is without rolling over. Interesting, huh? <coughs> so, gosh darn it, where's my very fine? Oh, there it is. It's hiding under, um, what's it called? What did you say? Okay, hold on. I can't find my very fine. That was the wrong one. It was a fine hiding. Oh, there it is. I had it under. Oh, you guys, by the way, I'm going to show you guys how to use these bezel punches. Um, and I'm going to set stones uh, probably on tomorrow's show. We're going to see. But this is this is all. Okay, we're going to see. But this is all because of Heidi. I love you, Heidi. And look what I've got for you. Okay, so this is the very fine scratch eraser. So just real quick, you guys, just a quick little zippity doo dah. You guys see how it just wants to do the whole thing? Oh, yes. And this is a very fine. I don't want a heavier one. That's nice. Thank you. 
See how it's already doing that beautiful? Just a light little touch and already we're even. Yes, so yes, who said this? Yes, Holly actually said that these edges are so smooth, it's probably uh, smoother than when this is brand new. I, I, that's what I was saying earlier, you guys. Your edges are going to be actually cleaner than a brand new disc cutter. Uh, who said I'm making gold coins? Tom, Tom, I wish I was making gold coins. Could you imagine if I was making gold coins? Anyways, with my face on it, so cute. Okay, so that's how clean that edge is, so nice. Okay, so again, if you guys want to polish this, you guys want me to polish this again, give me hearts if you guys want to see a another polish. Yes, so yes, yes, so the stone setting is happening, you guys, because it's good. <laughs> you guys like that there there the one that talks a lot didn't know what to say okay because I, so you guys want me to want to see me polish this I take it is that what you guys want so just give me some hearts if you guys want to see another polish yeah so the bezel punches you guys are going to see a technique that appears so these are Lori Lu Union sent these to me she's awesome she she's good so she made these um these rings for me, and I'm going to show you guys how to set them using the punches and then using the punches to smooth the outside and do the bezel finish with our flex shaft. Well, however, there's no flex shaft on this. Lovely. Because remember, you guys, with our flex shaft, it, it can open up larger than any other flex shaft, so I can hold all these bits on my flex shaft. So this is actually going to be the one that's doing all the bezel cleaning. Yes, so I'll show you guys how to do it tomorrow. We're going to whack some stones in the bezel and then I'm going to clean the outer edges, smooth it and press the metal down using our flex shaft. So stay tuned you guys. Woo, got a lot going on here. All right, so you guys want me to polish this? Yes, no, maybe so? Yeah? Okay. Yeah, yeah, no, really, Holly, these edges are nicer than the original cutter. I don't know if I cut this one earlier, but all the ones I've tried, kind of tested a lot of them, and they're all like, this is what you get. Do you hear this? This is what you get. Look, watch my nail. Look how it catches. You guys see that? It like has a lip to the point where it like pulls my nail. So, I don't care. My nails are bad. But when you just when I just stamped this, you guys, I didn't have that. With the when you lightly hone the top, because it, it gets very even. And with 3M abrasives, you guys, again, these are higher quality finishes than the original. Yes, who said that one? Yeah, Diana, I know. Diana says I just did the bezel punching stuff all last night. She could have used my technique. Well, tomorrow's another day. So anyway, so hopefully I'll get that tomorrow or Friday. Can't promise you guys much. Um, so remember, you guys, original grind on anything. Even when you go to buy a chisel, you know, or like I was just saying yesterday about those big pruning shears, you know, original grind is mass produced, mass produced. So the mass-produced people are not going to use expensive, fine-quality 3M Cubitron 2, or they're not going to use Trizac for this. You know what I mean? These are like so premium sanding products. So, but with the premium sanding product, Daryl, can you bring the camera here? I keep going over there. With the premium, turn the camera straight to me. Thank you. Oh, I see the camera pointed there, and you guys see me always going there. <laughs> Stop. With a premium sanding product, you guys, you're always going to be getting a finer finish than a factory grade. So like Holly said, this is a better finish, a better edge than when these disc cutters were even brand new. Some of these disc 
uh, cutters. Lori was telling me she re she rarely, if, e if ever, used. She actually only uses a few that I use. Um, those were the really dull ones. But some of these, I, even though they're extremely well made, don't get me wrong, I love Swanstrom. Love them. There's a wonderful owner, too. It's a woman. Uh, it's a family business. And they're lovely. And Tim Sheriff demonstrates them. So shout out to Swanstrom. I love them a lot. So, you guys, but just know that factory, something you get brand new doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be perfection. You can make it perfection, you guys, because you've got perfection making tools. Ah, who said that? M Margaret, thank you, Margaret. Margaret says everything's better after it's been jewel tooled. It's got the jewel tool touch, the jewel tool kiss, the jewel tool love. I don't know what I'm saying. This is what happens. I become delirious, you guys, with you guys. I feel like all my girlfriends are here and I can just be myself. But then I go back and I become a business person. My boyfriends, too. Okay, so <laughs> thanks, guys. Trust me. I love guys, so no, there's no, there's no, uh, uh, there's always love. Okay, so I will clean up this, this, uh, what's it called? This disc again. We'll just do a little recap of the felt polishing. You guys want to see that again? Yes, no? Maybe so? Yeah? Okay, so I'll do that. Okay, we'll do the dye tomorrow, whatever. Okay, so give me the overhead cam. Okay, so again, I'm going to do the one section here. We're going to do probably two here. Maybe bring it in to three here. And then four, maybe five. Maybe I'll just, do, uh, sometimes I actually will go into a lot of those little departments. You guys see that? So you see how, if you look at it, how I kind of gave it little departments, little sections, you know? Um, so then let me take my felt. So I'm going to show you guys my felt every time I use it. This is what my felt looks like, you guys, right here. Do you guys see how it has a little sheen? Sheen is okay, but once I put the compound on, it's going to look like this. Watch. Watch this. That's what it looks like. So we're going to keep going. Okay, so let's do number one. Okay, so pinch it good with your index finger and thumb. Use your other index finger and thumb to support and kind of hold it down. It's okay. We're doing number one now. Hold on. See, the second I touch it, see, the second you touch, do you see how quick you get that polish? I didn't push hard. I didn't, I didn't stall the machine. I didn't do anything of that sort. Just rely on the speed and the compound, you guys. It's not your pressure. It's the wheel. Trust me, that there's a reason why there's a motor on it. It's supposed to take the work, you know, out of it. It's supposed to be there to help you. So again, now we're going to move to number two. Just hold it there. Oh, yeah, we got a rough spot. So if you get a rough spot, it kind of gets a little bumpy, like, like, ro like airplane turbulence. But keep going. You guys see that? So now I'm going to go and kind of breathe. I'm going to push it towards the center and bring it all in even. So I'm going to start off here and work my way into number three, left to right to get a nice even finish. You guys see how I kind of glow glide over the whole face? You want to glide over the whole thing? No, hold on, wait. So I judged it, you guys. You guys see how even that is? I'll do it right. You can show a side view right now, Yaro. So this is again, we're going to do number four. So right here, hold it. Yeah, not pushy. Hold on, hold on. Not pushy, pushy. Are we top view? Oh. So someone's asking, what's the purpose of dividing this into sections? Because a lot of you guys like try to, a lot of you guys try to do the whole thing at once. 
Now, let's just remember, this is not the most smoothest surface that we're working on. So we need to work each area um, in sections to make sure I got, because if I just did this real quick, look, like look, uh, then I'm gonna like not sure if I missed a spot, if I got a spot, look, there's still some scratches. So if you just hold it in a spot, you can be rest assured that all those lines are gone. You guys see that? And so that's when I do, when now when you're here, you can bring it all together. So it doesn't matter what you do now. Everything is nice and smooth and you're not really taking any scratches off. You're just bringing in everything together to be nice and even. The, oh, you are so welcome. Said it's very informative. Thank you for a wonderful show. Yes. It, yeah. Oh, yes. Margaret knows about the section by section. So. So if there's any wavy area, there's no wavy areas. It just looks, but sometimes, but right, but right now there's no wave. It's just the rub marks is what you can see. But if you guys want to kind of do all of this in one shot, you guys would have to put like a little uh, double-sided tape at the bottom of your finger. Do I have any, you guys? I don't know. No. So if you guys don't, like you guys are just going to have to just wing it like me I'm doing right now. You know, kind of feed it in and just get that. That's all you're going to get. But it's all even. So from here to get rid of those rub marks, like I was saying earlier, you would just use, like, actually, I'm going to take my, I take my thumbs. My sometimes my thumbs are going to, like, get more dirt. So that's why I kind of got my thumb off. So, yeah. So let's go ahead. Oh, wait, which is the buff I used earlier? I don't remember. So give yourself a good amount of compound and just kind of just hold it there at the edge. So I kind of let it go and then I like use the top to kind of lightly give it an extra polish. Do you guys see that? Uh -huh. You can flip it around and do the other side. But so what you yeah, actually show the side view real quick. Yeah. So if you look on the screen, these are what I use so far uh, in this kit. So look at the side view, you guys. Look at how I'm going to touch the bottom. So I put the compound here, okay? Bottom corner. So I'm going to hold it here and just lightly push it up and down, not heavy pushing. And now when you're there, you can just tightly touch it to the top and you get this finish. Yeah. So that's a little technique. I want you guys to look at my buff too. This is a real serious jewel. No, no, you can look at it. Do you guys see how all my buffs are always whiter at the top? Do you guys see how it's more, you can see there's more metal collection down here at the bottom portion of the fel of the buff. And then up here, you really don't have much action of metal. I use this to give me an extra um, fluff. I give it, so it's a two part. It's a totally two function um, buff wheel. So you guys can totally see that there's a reflection of the, um, of the brass here and then you see nothing because I just use the edge to kind of do everything with the compound and I use that fine edge to just give it that extra fluff. You see that? Mm -hmm. And uh, if you want to get even more shinier for crying out loud, you can actually use <coughs> the magic buff. Which one? I'll use the, do I have the three inch? What happened to my, th oh, there it is. It's uh, hiding behind a brush. Why are you hiding? So let's go ahead and turn you on. Yeah, so you can, so that's not a bad idea. Margaret said that she's thinking about putting double-sided tape around like her vet wrap fingertips that's kind of smart so remember you guys back in the day i told you guys i had that double-sided tape that held down that kind of looks good you guys i'm not gonna lie look at that um that uh, that was used to hold down like carpets at the trade shows <coughs> it almost took me down um so you guys i actually contacted the manufacturer um for that tape um 
so it's kind of interesting because um, I contacted the manufacturer for that tape and you know as soon as they want to know what your company is about you know to see if you, you know they'll set you up as a dealer the first thing they see is this 3M logo is plastered everywhere and they're like oh you sell 3M stuff and I'm like yes I do but they don't sell this double-sided tape that you guys have so it's always interesting because they they always wonder what I'm about so I'm trying to get set up to get you guys that roll of double-sided tape that is amazing and it'll last you forever your husband will steal it from you it's awesome you can like put things like on the ceiling <laughs> and it won't fall off no no I don't have them in stock I'm working on getting them you guys a little pricey however oh perfect that's a good idea Myra hold on let me go ahead and remove the I can't use my left hand very well hold on Yara I don't want to because if I put my piece down I got to put fingerprints on it thank you it is I do that too as a jeweler whack things with a hammer so this is the piece I don't have a preview, so I don't know what you're seeing. Wow. Wow, guys. Ooh, la la. So this is the actual piece. Hold on. Yeah, there you go. Zoom out like that. So the piece is really kind of had scratches. It was wonky very pretty actually the jewel dish you know everyone likes shiny things I don't care what you say I love matte we love matte too but matte and shiny look really nice <laughs> so you guys it you know the contrast like look even this like just imagine if you did something with yeah so yeah so like even if you took let's say if you just took your little scrubby that's a good idea, Yaro. I'm gonna put my just give a little scrubby action here. Right? So this, uh, yeah, I know, right? It's crazy. Okay, so this is if you had it. Shoot, I gotta get my fingerprints off of it now. Don't go that close, Yara. I can't. I, I can't even. You just pull it out a little, so you get a difference in the contrast, Yara. So there you go. So that, that's what I want. That. Can you pull it out a little? There you go. So we can see it. Catch the light. The contrast of the satin finish with the polish. There. Ooh, la la. It's really pretty, you guys. I'm not gonna lie. I'm digging this. I'm gonna make things. What should I make? I gotta get my torch out here. So I hollow form, make domes. Oh my god, and facet. You can totally dome this and facet it and make Oh my god, the things that are swirling in my head, you have no idea. So you guys, I glad that you guys enjoyed today's little segment. I'll just keep saying, you know, you guys just feed me what you wanna see and I'll figure it out. And I'll show you guys and I'll work it out to get it on the show. So a big thank you to Lori Union for giving me her Swanstrom cutter. Watch, I'm going to get a phone call from Swanstrom and say, Ani, do you need stuff to demonstrate? <laughs> They're lovely people. I might actually just do that. But I don't know if you guys are not, haven't used their products. They're exceptional. And they're all made here in the USA, by the way. It's actually, where is that, in Illinois? I think Swanstrom's made in Illinois. But they're lovely. It's a, like I told you, lovely family business. And there's always a woman that is just so uh, sweet. I see her every year at JCK. So you guys, today, well, oh here's the other, oh wait, we didn't show you the other one. <gasps> the other one looks pretty too. Hold on. I forgot about this big mamacita. Oh yes. This was before. Look at that. Blech.
All right, so you guys, I will see you guys here tomorrow. Um, so I, pro I, I can't promise that I'm going to do the bezel punches tomorrow just yet, even though I have them. But you guys, it just depends on how my day's going, if I'm mind-focused and I could do it. So I'm going to aim. That's the plan. But you know, plans, things happen. But I just want you guys to know I got some exciting things like lined up for you guys, like I told you. And um, I don't know. Thanks so much for watching. If you're watching on YouTube, so don't forget to subscribe so you're... That's right. Subscribe so you're notified when I go live or when I post a new video. Um, but And then these are my recommended videos. You guys should watch all of them. They're good. I get, I cut to the chase, man, and I show you. Man, woman, child, everybody. So you guys, <laughs> thank you guys all for watching. I'm taking this day a little lighthearted because if not, I'm going to go crazy. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Always a pleasure. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate the love. You guys are so sweet. Thank you, bunches and bunches and bunches of oats. Thank you. You guys are awesome. So, you guys, I'll see you guys here tomorrow. I'm hoping to aim for my 2.30 slot, um, but let's see how it goes. But two, I said 2.30, but I'll guys, I, again, I'll post if I'm running late or anything like that. So just pay attention, 12.30. I said 2.30, God bless it. You guys, you don't understand. If I told you what all the things are in the head right now, you'll be like, and you showed a disc cutting demonstration and showed how to sharpen. Oh, you guys, the things. Anyways, you guys, I just want you guys to know, love you. Hugs and kisses. See you here tomorrow. And I wish you a blessed, beautiful day. Thanks for watching. Bye, you guys.